The book of Isaiah, often referred to as the fifth gospel, due to its profound messianic prophecies, is rich with themes of judgment, redemption, and divine promise. Chapter 43, particularly verses 1 and 2, marks a transition from judgment to comfort, where God speaks directly to Israel, offering words of hope amidst their exile. This study will delve into these verses, exploring their theological depth, historical context, and practical application for believers. The backdrop to Isaiah 43 is the Babylonian exile, a period of profound despair for the Jewish people. They were not just physically removed from their homeland but also felt spiritually and culturally uprooted. Isaiah's prophecy here serves as a beacon of hope, reminding them of their identity and God's unwavering commitment to them. The exile was not just a political event but a spiritual crisis, challenging the faith of Israel in God's promises. God's words in Isaiah 43 are not just a promise but a declaration of his sovereignty over all situations, including exile. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you Jacob, he who formed you Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. The terms created and formed are rich with meaning, reflecting God's profound involvement in Israel's history and identity. These words do not merely describe a distant act of bringing something into existence, they convey God's active ongoing role in shaping his people. Created emphasizes God as the originator, the one who brought Israel into being with intention and purpose. Formed goes a step further, suggesting God's continuous work in molding and refining his people, much like a potter carefully shapes clay. These terms collectively underscore that Israel's identity is not self-made but divinely crafted. Redemption, as presented here, is not confined to a distant future event, but is an ever-present reality, an ongoing act of God's grace that persists even in the darkest times. This continual redemption highlights God's unwavering commitment to his people, offering them hope and assurance in every season of life. The personal address, I have summoned you by name, you are mine, adds another layer of intimacy and significance to God's relationship with his people. This phrase paints a vivid picture of a God who knows his people individually, who calls each one by name, affirming their value and belonging. It is reminiscent of a shepherd calling his sheep, each one recognized and cared for personally. This declaration is not just a statement of ownership but a profound expression of love and commitment. It reassures the believer that they are not just part of a collective group but are individually known and cherished by God. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, the flames will not set you ablaze. This passage uses water and fire as metaphors for life's trials, drawing from imagery that would have been familiar and powerful in ancient times. Water and fire often symbolized forces of chaos, judgment, and purification. In many ancient cultures, water represented the unknown, the unpredictable, and sometimes the destructive power of nature. Fire, on the other hand, was a symbol of both destruction and purification, capable of refining metals or consuming entire cities. By using these elements, the text vividly illustrates the intensity and danger of the trials we might face in life. Yet, the promise is not that believers will be spared from these trials, but that God will be present with them through it all. This promise is radical in its assurance, while God does not guarantee a life without difficulties, he does guarantee his presence and protection in the midst of them. The imagery of not being swept away by rivers or burned by flames conveys God's ability to shield and preserve his people, no matter how overwhelming the circumstances. This assurance invites a deeper exploration of faith, trust, and the nature of divine intervention. 
It prompts believers to consider what it means to trust in God's presence even when the outcome is uncertain, and to find comfort in the knowledge that God's protection does not always mean the absence of trials, but His unfailing presence within them. Theological Implications These verses reveal profound truths about God's character. They highlight His sovereignty, illustrating that God is in control of all things, including the natural elements of water and fire, which are often beyond human control. His love and commitment to His people are evident in His promises of protection and redemption. God's personal involvement in the lives of His people underscores His intimate relationship with them, not as a distant deity, but as a close and caring Father. This passage also offers insight into the role of suffering in the life of a believer. Suffering, while difficult, is not meaningless. It can be a tool for refining faith and character, much like fire purifies gold. This perspective challenges the often held belief that a faithful life should be free from pain. Instead, it presents suffering as an integral part of spiritual growth and maturity. The mention of being named by God also carries deep theological significance. In the ancient world, naming was an act of authority and ownership, but also of care and protection. To be named by God is to have one's identity rooted in Him. This raises important questions for modern Christians about where they find their identity. In a world that often promotes self-definition apart from God, this passage calls believers to find their identity in being known and named by their Creator. It encourages a reflection on how this divine naming shapes our lives and choices, especially in a secular world that often contradicts biblical values. Practical Application For believers today, these verses offer immense comfort during personal crises. They remind us that no matter the trials we face, God is with us. This assurance can be practically applied in various ways. For instance, during times of difficulty, believers might turn to meditation on these promises, allowing them to seep into their hearts and minds, bringing peace amidst turmoil. Prayer is another powerful tool, enabling individuals to express their fears and anxieties to God, while also reminding themselves of His promises. Community support is equally important, as it allows believers to experience God's presence through the encouragement and help of others. Living in the Assurance of God's Presence Reflecting on this study could profoundly change one's understanding of God's presence in trials. Recognizing moments in life where God's presence was tangibly felt, as described in these verses, can be deeply enlightening. Such reflections not only strengthen faith but also increase awareness of God's ongoing work in our lives, even in the most challenging times. As a community, living out this promise means actively reflecting God's presence and protection to those around us. This might involve offering support to those in crisis, speaking words of encouragement, or simply being present with someone in their time of need. By doing so, we embody God's promise and become a tangible expression of His care in the world. This call to action challenges believers to move beyond merely receiving God's promises to actively sharing them with others, creating a ripple effect of God's love and protection in the community and beyond. Amen.